it's Leah here welcome back to another video on my channel today I have for you a new release from Coco and Claire this is their boho trio collection so it is three new gel polishes to their existing lineup features a nice kind of darker coral color a nice purple with some iridescent pink glitters and gold glitters in it and then a really nice sky blue color with some iridescent golds in it as well so using these three colors we are going to come up with a nail design if you watched yesterday's video then you would have seen this plate featured in it as a new release for may this is the textures grunge plate from clear jelly stamper i really wanted to use the wood grain on here i was just loving how it was looking and i was kind of thinking i could do like a vintage wood grain floral type of design so this is what i came up with for it and I'm going to walk you guys through my thought process of it and also some, I guess, kind of issues I had with creating the wood grain. So let's get into this. We are going to create the wood grain backgrounds first. So taking number 355 Bless from Coco and Claire, it is a neutral shade gel polish, but it has some gold flecks and kind of shimmers in it. And the reason that I wanted to use this one is because I feel like it matches kind of the collection that I am featuring the shades in it because they all have a nice little shimmer to it. So I'm going to paint two thin coats on the pointer finger and the middle finger as my accent nails for this design. A lot of times when I'm doing like my big feature nails, I tend to do them on the middle finger and ring finger, but I do like changing it up sometimes too and doing them on the pointer finger and middle finger as well. Now, a lot of times these kind of shimmery gel polishes from Coco and Claire, they can apply a little bit gritty because they have so much glitter in them, which is something that I really appreciate about it. So just make sure you're working thin and you're doing them in nice, thin, even coats. If you've been here for a while, you've seen me do wood grain nails with alcohol inks, but I wanted to use just gel polish in this design to create my wood grain background. So I'm going to take these two brown gel polish shades from Coco and Claire and I'm just going to put a little bit of them on my tile and then in my container here I just have some 99% alcohol all ready to go. I'm going to take this kind of pointed brush. I honestly have no idea where I got this from but it is quickly becoming a favorite brush of mine. And I'm just going to dab a little bit of the brown onto the nails and then to kind of make it water out a little bit and marble together. I'm just going to dip my brush in the alcohol and this is going to make the gel polish kind of thin out, kind of like alcohol inks, except it doesn't blend as nicely. So you might just have to kind of play around with it. But all I'm going for with doing this technique is just to have a little bit of texture to the nail, a little bit of gradients with both the different shades of the brown but I do not want to cover up the beige kind of color completely I definitely want that neutral shade to be popping through so all I'm doing here is just creating a little bit of texture and I found that the best way to do this was to do it in two thin coats so do my coat get it all the way that I like it cure it and then go back in and do a second coat on top and I found that this created a little bit more lining and a little bit more veining which is exactly what I was going for so if you don't have alcohol ink in your collection you can definitely use gel polish so in this particular design here instead of going in with the gel polish colors first I'm just going to wet my brush with alcohol on it first and then I'm going to go in and add some of the gel polish on top and this technique I think worked a little bit better because I was able to create more of that veining that I was kind of looking for and not so much like dabbed gel polish on the nails. I really liked how this particular nail turned out. Now obviously these are not going to marble exactly like alcohol inks do but I was actually really happy with how they were turning out just by using alcohol and gel polish together to get this kind of textured effect. I featured the blue from this collection in yesterday's video, so I was just trying to decide between using Secret Rose or Living Lavish. Ultimately, I decided on Secret Rose because I was kind of picturing like a pinky type of floral design with this. So I decided to apply this one all over the pinky finger and the ring finger, and this applied so nice. So how I was saying that creamy type of shade kind of had a little bit of a gritty texture to it, and you have to kind of work it out a little bit, that is not what this pink is like. This pink reminds me kind of like a jelly gel polish and how it applies. You definitely need to do two thin coats with this, and it is like slightly a little tiny bit sheer, so if you don't want it to kind of look a little bit sheer like 
like that you might just have to um, build it up a little bit but I was so happy with how it applied I'm actually contemplating wearing this shade on my nails next time because it is just so pretty I love that it has like a rosy color to it but kind of coral and then it's got the gold flex also I'm going to apologize right now for some of these nails being a little bit out of frame I did not mean to do that after I applied my pink and it was cured I decided to go in and matte top coat all of the nails and I wasn't too sure what I was going to do on top of the pink nails but I figured if it was stamping or if it was crystals I would want it to be matte anyway which is why I went in with the matte top coat this is where it gets a little bit dicey so I was originally thinking that it'd be kind of cool to do like a chromed wood grain nail so I pulled these two palettes from Coco and Claire they're chrome palettes and I decided to put some of the lighter type of gold shades on my stamper here and I wanted to kind of create like a blended look with them so I'm going in with I think three different shades on this to create a little bit of a different dimension with all of the gold I decided to leave all of this footage in so that you could see that the designs do not just come together all the time for me. Sometimes I play around with different things to kind of see what works and what doesn't. So initially I went in with a black sticky polish from CJS and stamped it down and I wasn't a huge fan of how dark this kind of looked and even when I stamped the chrome on top of it I felt like you couldn't really tell that it was wood grain and the black was kind of poking through too much for my liking so then I was thinking if I went in with more of a bronzy type of color on the chrome as well as the white sticky polish from CJS maybe I would like that a little bit better and after I got the white applied on the nail, I actually really liked how just the white looked on its own. So I think in hindsight with this design, a nice creamy color would have looked really good too because the white actually looked good, but it was again too bright for my liking. And then when I got the gold chrome on top of it, the white was kind of poking through. Again, you couldn't really tell that it was good grain. So then I grabbed my favorite brown stamping polish, which is number 60. It's kind of got like a metallic look to it. So I was thinking this would cover like all of my bases. I would get some of that shimmery look to it. I would have a little bit more of the solidness of the color of the wood grain. So you'd be able to tell that it was actually wood grain. And I liked this. I just, I think it's a little bit too dark for the look that I was going for, but I ended up leaving it. I'm going to take some of these nail decals from Glitter Mix Canada and apply these on the wood grain nails. Now you could totally go in and stamp florals as well, but I really wanted my florals to be bright and to really stand out. And especially because I had picked a brown stamping polish, I wasn't really too sure if that was going to happen if I was to stamp on top of these nails. And I really wanted to include some of that greenery and like the really realistic kind of looking flowers of these nail decals. So I applied two of them on the middle finger and then on the pointer finger, I decided to go in with three different florals and kind of layer them up. After I had them where I wanted them, I took my matte top coat from Coco and Claire, which is one of my hands down favorite matte top coats. And I'm just going to go in and apply that over top of these nail decals. I ended up doing two coats of the matte top coat just to seal these in really well. And after I had cured it, I did go in and like buff and file them a little bit just to make sure none of those decals were poking through. For the pink nails, I didn't want to do too much on them, but I knew I wanted to use some pearls as well as some rose gold accents and vintage rose crystals. So I'm just going to take some glue and apply a little bit to the cuticle here. And I'm going to take one of these rose gold rings and put it on top. And then I'm going to take one of the kind of pearly shades of pearls and put it in the middle. I love how this looks like you could just leave it like that and it would look super cool. But I decided to just go in with some of the vintage rose crystals because if you've been here for a bit, you know these are my favorite crystal colors. So the larger crystals on the side, I believe are SS 14s. They're not quite the 20s that I like to use, but um, they are a little bit smaller than that. And then the really small ones are SS sevens. And I'm just going to create some random crystal cluster here because I really had no idea what I was going to do. Um, I think that I took it a little bit too far and added too many crystals, <laughs> but it's hard to do when I'm working with crystals because I sometimes just cannot stop. So I feel like right now you could have just stopped. It would have been great. Um, which is what I did and then I moved on to the pinky nail which I knew I just wanted one little crystal on there I just wanted a little tiny accent and I love doing this especially if people do not want a lot of crystals but they want a little bit of bling just one in the center looks great after I'd applied that one though I was looking at the ring finger and I was thinking okay we can add some more on here so I did go in and add a couple more but I, I think it just got a little out of hand I don't think it was necessary to add this many crystals on the ring finger 
I really like wood grain nails left matte, but the decals on this were kind of bugging me that they weren't bold enough. So I decided to go in with a shiny top coat and really brightened everything up. So I am glad that I ended up making some of these a little bit more shiny. And this is how the nail design turned out. If I was featuring the thumb in this design, I would have done it exactly like the pinky finger as well. I'm really happy with this. I think this is a really pretty look and I would totally wear this design, but I do think that the brown wood grain maybe would have looked a little bit better if it was done a bit lighter as well. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Comment below and let me know what sort of nail art techniques or ideas or themes you would like to see done up next. Make sure you're following me on all my social media and I will see you in my next video. Bye.